Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. One of the more difficult subjects in all physics dumb <laughs> is the topic of today's conversation. So, relative motion. What is it? Have you ever sat in a moving train? Watch the people outside, zoom, zoom, zoom. Even if they were sitting down, they appear to move. Relative to you, that's important. All right, but from their perspective, right, they're sitting down. You're the one moving. This is the idea of relative motion. Think of it this way. Everyone has a different view, and none of them are wrong. And we can use this to help solve these kinds of problems. So let's just... Big picture here, let's suppose that your passenger, passenger in a car moving 80 kilometers per hour to the east. So here's my car, boom, boom, my car. And I'm moving at 80 kilometers per hour to the east, right? Now, let's think about this. From your perspective, all right, from the perspective of the car, What's your relative velocity? It's zero kilometers per hour. You don't see or feel like you're moving, do you? All right? Now, but what about to the perspective of a van that's moving 95 kilometers to the east? So here is my car moving at 80, and then the van is moving at 95. Think about this for a moment. The van is going faster than yours. So from the perspective of the van, you are going 15 kilometers per hour to the east. Because you're only going he's only going 15 miles an hour faster than you. Make sense? But what about a truck? Now the truck, notice he is headed west. And so your car is going at 80, and the truck is going at 80, but in the opposite direction. All right, what is the speed that it seems like that you're traveling? The truck feels, your perspective, the truck is moving at 160 kilometers per hour. You see, we're adding the numbers. You all just think about this. If you're going to have a collision, if there was some sort of an accident, the worst is a head-on collision. Why is a head-on collision? Because the actual speeds, 80 and 80, add up to 160. You're going to be hitting at a 160 because it's really relative velocities when you strike each other. That's the crazy. So that's your view of the truck. So my view of the van is I think he's going 15 kilometers per hour to the east, right? Because he's going 15 miles per hour more than me or kilometers per hour. From my perspective, he's traveling, the truck is traveling is the 160. And from my perspective in the car, it's traveling at zero. But now let's take a look at the view of the opposite side, their view. All right, this one is the same. This, If I've got the car, uh, the car is going um, 80 kilometers. But from my perspective, it's zero kilometers because I'm still, the, this is the car, car. But what about from the perspective of the van, right? So again, the car is going 80, the van is going 95, but the, he feels like you're going away to the left, so this one feels like you're going 15 kilometers per hour to the west, or you might even say negative 15 kilometers per hour to the east, because it looks like you're going behind him from the perspective of the van. And the truck, all right, actually, we should, we should look at this. It looks like they're 20, uh, 160 to the west. And again, we still got the car going and the truck when they're coming and the truck coming. But he, from his perspective, he thinks you're going 160 kilometers per hour to the east. From his perspective, you're coming at him at 160 kilometers per hour. So does that make sense? So what we're doing is we're essentially adding the two numbers, sometimes sort of a little bit of a sub traction as we do this. So let's jump ahead, do like a sample problem here with the pilots and stuff like that. So on a plane's pilot, so this is where this applies. The motion of a moving object can be predicted even if it's moving in water or wind. Okay, This is all done when you, you fly an airplane if you're in a boat. So when a plane's pilot or ship's captain sets course, it's not, necess it's not necessarily in the direction in which they travel. 
the wind of the current can cause a change in their velocities. So here's like the big monster equation. The big equation. Equation. Okay. <laughs> VOG. Okay. Equals VOW plus VWG. These will all be, um, what you call it, uh, vectors, of course, right? So what is VOG, the velocity of the object, VO, with respect to the ground? So this is sort of the absolute one. VOW is the velocity object with respect to the wind, okay, or the water. If it's current, it could be like a it could be like an airplane or it could be like a boat and a ship or something like that. And then the VOG is the velocity of the wind or the water relative to the ground. So it's the wind with respect to the ground or the water. So water, wind, it says water, and ground from the perspective of the ground. That's the equation. Quite simple. So let's, let's do some of these examples here. A pilot takes off from an airport. Okay, got the pilot taken off from an airport, heading to another due east of the first. If the plane is set to fly 250 kilometers east, show how the plane's velocity left the observer of the ground changes with different directions of the wind. All right, so we've got wind things going on. Let's figure this out. So the plane is set to fly 250 kilometers to the east. So let's write our equation. V O G equals VOW plus V W G. Right? Arrows on all these. So 250, he's going to the east, and the wind is going at 75. And so this is a tailwind, right? And so we've got the, this is 75. So what's the real speed? I mean, let's think about this for a moment, right? Uh, the velocity of the um, object relative to the wind, we're going to, with, with respect to the ground, how fast is he really going? Hopefully you see this. He's, he's going to go 275, right, to the east. That's it, right? tailwind, but this is the reverse, right? Let's say he's going 250, so this is a headwind, 250 here, and he's fighting a headwind, and it's a 75 uh, kilometer per hour headwind, so with respect, his, you're going to subtract the two, so 250 minus 75, it's a uh, 175, yeah, 175 kilometers per hour to the east because he is going in the opposite direction, right? Now, what about if we have a side wind? Now, this is the more complex problem, right? So I'm going 200, and this is for the north, that matters. So this is going 250, all right? And then the, this is pushing me up at 75. Now, do you see how this is that resultant vector thing? And so if I draw the arrow here, the actual direction will be different. So what's the actual speed? So let's do that. This becomes Pythagorean theorem, right? So the hypotenuse here, right? So the actual velocity will be uh, v is equal to the square root of v, if you will, equals 250 squared plus 75 squared square rootage. And if you get your calculator out, trust me, what you're going to get is you're going to be V equal to 260 kilometers per hour. Now, that's a, a note. That's 260 kilometers per hour off to some angle. But the angle matters. So if we're doing the angle, then what do we have to do? We're going to do Sokotoa. So what have we got? We've got the, if this is the angle, all right, we've got, uh, this is the uh, adjacent and this is the opposite. So opposite over adjacent, I'm going to use the tan. So I can say tan of theta is equal to the opposite, 75, over the adjacent, 250. Now you have to do the arc tan, the inverse tan, to get it on your calculator. If you know how to use that, um, I'll help you in class. And what you end up with is an angle of theta is equal to 17 
degrees. So it's not just he's going 260 miles or kilometers per hour, he's going 70 degrees to the northeast at this speed. You see how you have to add the resulting vectors. So a couple note here. If the vectors If the vectors are collinear, that says linear, sorry, then add or subtract, depending on just doing some math. And if not, use the Pythagorean theorem, and you're going to be able to figure out what the final answer is for the VOG. So that's uh, the first video on relative motion. We have another one coming up that takes the problems and makes them a little bit more difficult. We'll see you in class. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem.